But before we get started on the next uh, episode here of our Plan B, let's do a little prequel to last week's video and take a trip back in time. Originally, out at the main road at the highway, they had a sign here that showed to Charlie's Ranch, it was two and a half miles. And there was a view of Soda Butte, and here we are turning into the ranch as the entrance used to be with their Rankin Ranch sign hanging. For years, we always stayed in a tent uh, at the ranch, originally in the uh, tree line, but here we are by the uh, new uh, shed. Sherry was taking a little bit of a nap inside. We were really moving up uh, when we got a chance to move uh, some of our camping gear inside the barn there uh, to cook with. Uh, that made things a lot nicer. Of course, we were out there for the wildlife, so it was fun to uh, look for antelope and for mule deer across the ranch and adjoining properties. Here we took a little side trip to Devil's Tower, which is real close to the Rankin Ranch. Aren't these horses beautiful? Uh, these were working horses. Uh, they rode these horses for competition and for ranching. Mule deer hop when they run, unlike white-tailed deer, and uh, they're not quite as fast. Mule deer are inquisitive, uh, so they don't spook as easily as white-tailed deer, so it's easy to get a good look at them. How those pies turned out? Good. good. Didn't take us long to eat them. <laughs> <laughs> I know, those were good for me, too. Those pies, I kept, or apples, I kept eating them like crazy. The climbing of the butte. Can they make it? Mike found. Yeah, these guys get their exercise. So I took them over to where the place they went up on that high point right there by the road. Oh, that's so to Yeah, so to They climbed up on there? Yeah, they come up on top of it. <laughs> I've never been up there, and I've lived here all my life. <laughs> they were down here at this other one down here when he turned to go to Buffalo Creek, they crawled up in there. In the next few clips here, you can see the old uh, log cabin where Charlie was born, still on the ranch, that I told you about in the last video. Curtis is on the right and Raymond's on the left. <laughs> 
Here's Charlie getting ready to rope. I love this particular video and have fond memories of it. These guys are real cowboys and they really do know how to rope and ride. After what appears to be a practice run to make sure he had the uh, speed of the horse and his timing down right, Charlie uh, backs his horse down into the uh, starting position and is getting ready to uh, rope this steer. Um, I just find this absolutely amazing uh, to watch these guys do this because it's a real team effort between the ropers but it's also a team effort between the rider and the horse if you'll watch this closely you'll see that the horses are actually back down and uh, actually pull back and that's all being done by a combination of the skill there it is the horse is backing down and this is all through the skill of the rider and the horse understanding what needs to be done in order to have a successful rope. These videos were shot from 1990 and 1991 on our annual trip out there for the hunting season. What a pleasure it is to have captured these fond memories. I hoped you liked that flashback. Now let's get back on the motorcycles and hit the road. Good morning, everyone. Hey, we're up bright and early this morning. The sun's already shining. It's warming up pretty quick here. Unlike yesterday when it was cloudy and afternoon uh, severe thunderstorms, looks like today's going to be bright and sunny. We're going to be heading from Gillette, Wyoming to Billings, Montana today. Regardless of where you fall in the political spectrum of coal, coal mining is tied directly to Gillette, Wyoming. There are 16 mines in the Gillette area, and their economy is heavily dependent on these mining operations. The coal industry here in Gillette supplies 40% of the United States coal and 80% of the coal that's used in Wyoming. The coal from these mines is low sulfur coal, which means it burns cleaner than other coal sources. Coal in the United States is used mainly for energy production, and the loss of coal plants has created a situation in 2022 that there may be blackouts in certain areas of the United States. Currently, gas and oil account for 80% of the electricity grid, with renewables only at 20%. There is no question that we need to be looking for alternative sources of energy because once the coal, oil, and gas is used up, it's gone forever. An extended phase-in of renewable energy seems to be a common-sense approach that allows the infrastructure and the technology to catch up to our current energy needs and projected needs in the future. Alas, this simple man approach to energy needs will probably fall on deaf ears from both sides.
The ride north out of Gillette is goes through a just absolutely beautiful area. And we saw plenty of wildlife in this area. I would highly recommend this route uh, for motorcyclists if you're traveling through the area. You'll get to see some uh, awesome scenery and a lot of animals. Here we see an antelope grazing right along the edge of the highway. After turning west on State Route 212, we ride through the Custer National Forest. It's a beautiful area. We were definitely climbing an elevation heading into a more mountainous area. And surprisingly, this particular highway had a lot of truck traffic on it. I couldn't quite figure that out because the interstate that I thought would have handled most of that east-to-west traffic but there were plenty of semis on this route for whatever reason. This particular route takes you through the Northern Cheyenne Indian Reservation of Montana. There are seven Indian reservations in the state of Montana, and today we ride through two of them. We'll also be riding through the Crow Nation area. After a short ride on Interstate 90, we jump on State Route Old 87 towards Billings. Without question, this was the highlight ride of the day. As we get closer to Billings, the weather is starting to threaten us again and we get a little bit of rain, not too terribly bad though. The cloud cover was so heavy through this one section that our camera settings were too dark for it. I know it looks a little odd, but it was just because of the heavy cloud cover. Thank you. 
Finally, we're riding back into the sunshine here. In this last section, we switch left, we switch right, as we descend down to the town of Billings. It was without question an absolute delight to ride this section of Old State Road 87. There's no question that the route we took today is a fantastic motorcycle ride for all motorcyclists. It keeps you off the interstate and you get into some beautiful country and a lot of twisties here. Well, for today, our first uh, ride, we went north out of uh, Gillette on 16, and then we picked up Highway 59, and we followed this uh, right on up to the Montana state border and into Montana. 
And I got to tell you, that was a beautiful drive up in there, and we saw a lot of animals. So if you're interested in a motorcycle ride that's really nice, I'd highly recommend that section here that goes from Gillette up into Montana on 59. After we crossed into Montana, we stayed on 59 until we intersected with uh, State Route 212. And then we took State Route 212 um, westward, and it goes through the Northern Cheyenne Tribe Territory, and then it comes out here on Interstate 90. And right at that intersection is the Custer Battlefield um, Museum and uh, Park there. That's really interesting if you haven't uh, done that uh, before. I've been there a couple times, so we didn't stop this time around. Then we jumped on the interstate for a short ride uh, here until we intersected Old State Route 87. And then we got off on that and followed this around until we came up into Billings, Montana. But I got to tell you that Old State Road 87 is well worth the ride. I think it's only about 20 miles, uh, but it's just absolutely beautiful country. It twists around and uh, you have some switchbacks as you come into Billings. It's just a beautiful ride. That's another one that I would highly suggest uh, that if you get a chance, ride that road. Don't change that bat channel. There's more to come. We've got a special guest this evening for dinner. What a lovely person Melissa is, and Sherry finally got a chance to meet her after several years now. That's all for now. Take care.